The automatic level is our most common instrument for measuring elevation differences reliably. First, we have to learn how to set it up and how to operate it properly. I'm Todd Horton for the Illinois Professional Land Surveyors Association. These three instruments function identically. They are all automatic levels. What makes these levels automatic? Well, each one contains a tiny set of mirrors that move automatically in response to earth gravity, ensuring that the instrument line of sight is always perfectly level. If the instrument settles during use, this automatic compensator adjusts the line of sight simultaneously. Here you can see the top of the mechanism moving as the instrument is tilted. Because they contain compensators, automatic levels give greater precision than older uncompensated instruments can. In this view, you can see that each telescope has a telescope eyepiece and a leveling base. The simplest and most reliable modern instruments use three leveling screws. Here you can see the objective lens and the objective focus knob. Each instrument has a circular bubble level. When the telescope is properly leveled, the telescope line of sight is perpendicular to the direction of gravity. Some instruments include a small mirror that enables viewing the bubble level from the end of the instrument like you see here. This convenient feature speeds up the setup process. Let's demonstrate the instrument setup process for an automatic level. First, with the tripod legs fully extended, mount the instrument on the tripod head. Many tripods use locking clamps to fix the leg lengths. Here's a closer view showing how to attach the instrument to the tripod. The instrument has a coarse internal thread in the center of its base. This matches a loose mounting bolt attached under the tripod head. Thread the bolt into the base, but before tightening it, align the three leveling screws with the three corners of the triangular tripod head. This will simplify the remainder of the setup. When you extend the tripod legs, adjust them to ensure that you'll stand comfortably with the eyepiece at your standing eye level. You are more likely to misread the level rod when you're bent over like this. Next, move the instrument to a convenient location and spread the tripod legs evenly apart, keeping the tripod head nearly level. When you move the instrument around your project site, Carry it in the upright position while still mounted atop the tripod. Spread the tripod feet at least three feet apart to make the tripod stable. If they're too close together, the whole thing will be top heavy and unstable. To plant the tripod legs firmly into the ground, apply your full weight to each foot peg. This works on bare earth, grass, concrete, and asphalt surfaces. On concrete surfaces, use grooves, cracks, or holes in the concrete to secure the tripod feet when possible. Even on a sidewalk like this one, your weight will help the pointed tripod tip to settle into the rough surface texture. On asphalt surfaces, you'll see the pointed tips penetrate more on hot days and less on cold days. When you must set the tripod on a hillside, set two of the tripod legs on the downhill side of the instrument, as you see here, for stability. After planting the tripod feet, you'll be ready for the first of two phases of leveling, and that first phase is coarse leveling. While viewing the bubble level, 
adjust the leg lengths to move the level bubble partly into the circle. First, watch how a centered bubble moves when the tripod leg length changes. When I shorten the leg under the eyepiece here, you see the bubble move away from that leg. When I extend that same leg, the bubble moves toward that leg. Why is that? Well, the bubble always moves to the highest side of the instrument, like you can see in this side view of the bubble tube. Here's a trick I use to change the leg length. Notice how I grip one of the upper rods of the tripod leg and press my thumb on the lower half of the leg. After releasing the clamp, I can relax my grip to allow the leg to shorten under the instrument's weight. Or, I can adjust my grip and push with my thumb to make the leg longer. You'll need to adjust the leg length while watching the bubble to get it partially into the circle. In this scenario, you can see the bubble is off-center. Changing the leg length will move the bubble either toward the circle or along the level wall. In this case, it moved along the level wall. Therefore, I'll stop adjusting the leg when the bubble lines up in line with another tripod leg. Then I'll shorten that leg to move the bubble into the circle. One more adjustment with the first leg moves the bubble just a little bit more. Now this is the end of the course leveling phase. Now to fine level the instrument, that is in the second phase of leveling, center the bubble by adjusting the leveling screws using the left thumb rule. Before I explain the left thumb rule, let's see how we must level the instrument in two directions. Using two screws simultaneously, you can level the instrument left to right and right to left. Since the knobs in the leveling base are actually turning on screw threads, you're shortening one screw while extending the other. Well, using the third screw alone, you can level the instrument back to front and front to back. So the left thumb rule works this way. With the eyepiece centered between two leveling screws, turn those two screws at the same speed in opposite directions. The bubble will move in the same direction as your left thumb. Use these two screws simultaneously to move the bubble left to right and right to left. Then, to move the bubble forward or back, use the third screw by itself. When the bubble is centered, turn the instrument 90 degrees, roughly, and ensure that the bubble returns to the circle. If it doesn't, adjust the screws and recheck it. If upon rechecking it, it's still not centered, well, then the instrument may require maintenance. Now, with fine leveling complete, you're ready to aim and measure. This instrument has an aiming sight. Light shining on the front of the aiming sight illuminates a white arrow like this one. When the white arrow roughly aligns with the level rod in the distance, you'll find the rod easily through the telescope. This instrument simply provides a groove along its top side to assist with rough aiming. This one has simple aiming sights like you would find on a rifle. Use your aiming sight along with your slow motion screw to find the rod easily. Each of these three instruments has a slow motion screw. The slow motion screw has a knob on both the left and right sides. Turning either knob will adjust the instrument direction smoothly and slowly and help you refine your aiming. 
Your first look through the instrument usually gives a blurry view. So, adjust the objective focus knob, that is the biggest knob, until you see the rod markings. With your slow motion screw, refine your aim until the crosshair allows a reading. Often the crosshair may not be visible at your first look. The crosshair isn't broken or missing, it's merely out of focus. Rotate the eyepiece until the crosshair comes into its sharpest focus. Now it's time to test your focusing results for parallax. Parallax exists when the crosshair appears to move up and down as you move your head slightly up and down. If you detect parallax, refocus the crosshair to its sharpest and darkest condition and then adjust the objective focus as needed. A few fine adjustments usually get rid of parallax. The mark you see here above the leveling screw indicates the center of the adjustment range in the screw. After all measurements are complete and before removing the instrument from the tripod, return the leveling screws to their centered positions. The next time you remove the instrument from the case, the screws will be centered and ready to use. Following these steps consistently will help you to minimize errors and to work with confidence. I'm Todd Horton for the Illinois Professional Land Surveyors Association.